Hi! In this example, we're going to go ahead and find the volume of an object given the shape of its base and its cross section. So here they give us a graph of this shape here in which is the base of an object. <clears throat> now we're going to complete, compute the volume given the cross section to be an equal angular triangle. So the perpendicular um, I mean, the cross section is perpendicular to the base and parallel to the y axis. So, an equal angular triangle is another way of saying equilateral triangle. It just means equal angular is talking about the angles, equilateral talks about the sides. But essentially, they mean the same thing, where every angle is equal in a triangle and every side length is also equal. So, um, if you may not know, um, this information, you know, there's always like Google or something else, but you know, now that you're getting further into your calculus sequence, sometimes you will have to use references uh, in other textbooks to help you, you know, gather a formula that you may need or remind yourself. So in this case, I went ahead and drew a triangle in which we could see that every angle here is 60 degrees and each side is length A. So the area of that cross section would be three fourths, a square root of three over four times the side squared. And then the volume is the area times the thickness, right? So um, we can go ahead and start by finding the area of each cross section. So now if we go back to the base of our object, we can see here that at x equals five, I'm so sorry, x equals four is where that line with a slope stops, right? So we can see here from the origin up to x equal 4 that there is some sort of slope happening there, right? And then after 4, from 4 to 7, we can see that it's a constant function, right? The slope is 0. So we see that this y-intercept is 0, and then we can go ahead and look for the slope. I'll look for a well-defined point. So here, I'm going to go ahead and pick um, from the origin up to 2, 3. Okay, so the slope there would be up 1, 2, 3, and over 2. So up 3, over 2, and with the y-intercept of 0. So y equals 3 halves x. Great, and then when we get to 4, we can see net then that it's a constant function from x equals 4 to x equals 7, and that is going to be the line y equal 6. Great, so let's go ahead and set up our cross-section um, area. So the first thing we'll do is set up, here we go, the area of the cross-section. Okay, so the area of the cross section is go for x less than 4, right, but to the right of 0, is going to be equal to that formula, square root of 3 over 4, times the side of the equal um, lateral triangle or angular. Okay, I'm going to leave a little more room here. Okay. So what does that look like? Well, let's go ahead and draw these little triangles. Maybe we can get an idea. I'll draw one here. So if the base of this triangle is this length, then the equilateral, all the sides will be also the same, right? And we can see that the thickness here is dx or delta x. But this will change, right, along this line, right? right? This base, this side, in which all the sides are equal, right? This side here, right? Notice that it's going, this point here on this line is only from the x-axis to that line. So I'm missing the entire base, right? I'm only getting half that base. I need this whole base, but really, this point will only give me from the x-axis to that line. So if I put in x, it's only giving me this um, distance there, that y distance. But I need the whole thing. Well, luckily that this shape is symmetric about the x-axis. I need that whole base. 
So I'm going to have from the x-axis to the line and then, that's right, and double it, right? Get that whole base there, that whole line, right? Right now, um, two, three halves x only gives me from here to here, but if I double it, it'll give me the whole thing. So I'm going to go ahead and put in that three halves x. That's that only half of the base. And then we'll multiply by two to get that entire base of the triangle. Okay, and so now we can go ahead and deal with when x is greater than four up to seven, right? Still, um, still equilateral triangles, but what's nice is no, what, wherever I draw the equilateral triangle, and again, not drawn to scale, but all these sides are gonna be equal. And no matter from, uh, x equal 4 to 7, notice the base or the side A is the same no matter where I draw it, right? Because of the constant function y equal x. But it will only give me same situation from that x axis to that line, right? And in order to get the whole base, I'm going to need to double it. So I'm going to have here... Um, square root of 3 over 4 times that base squared. So I'm going to have first uh, the 6 and then double it, right? So again, here, from here to here is like from here to here, right? It only gives me a half, but I can double it to give me that entire side. Okay, and then just do some simplifying here. Um, we'll get square root of 3 over 4 times, and we'll have to square everything here. What's nice, what's going to happen here is that these twos reduce out, and I'm left with 3x squared, which would be 9x squared. And this will be equal to the square root of 3 over 4 times 12 squared, which is 144. Okay, and just uh, simplifying this a little bit more, I'm going to have 9 square root 3 over 4 times x squared, because I know I'm going to use that constant multiple rule. And then below here, I'll go ahead and um, uh, reduce this by 4. So that'll give me 3, and then um, it gives me 2 left over, which is 36. So I'm going to have... 36 square root 3, just like that. Now I'm ready to set up my volume. So now let's go ahead and let's set up the volume. Okay. So the volume is given to us as the formula V equals a, uh, a definite integral from A to B of the area times the thickness. The thickness is, again, the thickness of those triangles, which is, we said, delta x or dx. So here we're going to have, the volume's going to equal, maybe I can fit it all in a little bit. There we go. Volume will be equal to the first part, right? That first part from 0 to 4 of the area which I said was 9 square root 3, right? We calculated it together, x squared dx, plus the definite integral from 4 to 7 of the area of the cross-section, 36 square root 3 dx. Now this becomes a simple integration problem, and we're going to go ahead and have 9 square root 3 over 4 from the constant multiple rule times the antiderivative of x squared, which is going to be x cubed over 3, evaluated from 0 to 4, plus 36 square root 3. And using that property from chapter 1, we have 7 minus 4. OK, I'm going to go ahead and kick out this 1 third here and reduce that fraction. So that way we have only 3 fourths square root 3 times 4 cubed minus 0 cubed plus 36 square root 3 times 7 minus 4, which is 3. 
Okay, so we can go ahead and simplify this a little bit more. Um, I'm going to get 3 fourths square root 3 times 4 cubed plus 36 times 3, which is um, 108 square root 3. Right, 3. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and reduce this a little bit. I'm going to reduce the, a 4 out, right? And then I'm going to go ahead and get 4 squared, which is 16. And 16 times 3 is 48. So we'll get 48 square root 3 plus 108 square root 3. So we can go ahead. Um, they're both square root 3, so they're like terms. So we can go ahead and add them. So 48 plus 108 gives us 156 square root 3. And then it's volume, so I always say put cubic units. Call me a purist that way. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and scroll up a little bit. And yes, we can definitely see that that is the correct answer. So again, it's just about setting up that area of the cross section and then putting that into the volume formula.